Uh, Matt, this you, we've been eyeing, we've been waiting. You've been t- you've been nailing this, quite frankly. You nailed the 1680 uh, zone. Thought that it would test it and hold it. It did. It came back up. Started selling back down. We got the double test. Now we've been rallying for the last six days or so towards resistance. Here today, we're now testing a breakout, uh, but you still have some some chop above it. Uh, what what's your read here on the chart, Matt? Uh, reads very simple. Um, this is a textbook W formation, and my analysis has simply been following textbook W formations, and it's been playing out. So we're just at that next part, uh, the next part of the of the of the W reversal, and that is the breaking of the resistance. That's at 1750, and we talked about where it's going to test and the importance of the 50-day moving average. And so, quite frankly, we're just at that next stage in this uh, potential reversal and the characteristics are actually very, very positive in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mark, I know that you've been, uh, you know, adding to your gold exposure based on the analysis here of the show, you've been talking about it. Uh, What's your approach to to gold? Uh, No, same. Like, you know, I mean, the the, the analysis here on the show, uh, I've loved, I've, you know, and I've said this several times in the last week, I love how when it came down and volatility and stuck that support level, I've been adding a little bit every day. I added a little bit more on that breakout. I mean, once again, and then I do this from a cash flow perspective on right now, because we got weight ahead, right? Falling moving averages, other resistance zones, stuff that can happen, right? <clears throat> so I am not directional, but I have been adding cash flow exposure to gold uh, pretty steadily over the last week and uh, probably will continue to do so unless I, you know, see something. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and it, the beautiful thing about gold GDX or anything we've been analyzing on gold, it's 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 got a little it, it it's got a little bit of the same analysis that Bitcoin has in it. Obviously, there is some correlation there, but unlike Bitcoin, where we have to have a very thorough conversation on where the breakout channel is, where confirmation is, how you want to play it aggressively versus conservatively, you could be extremely patient on these reversals in gold because it's gold. It doesn't have 130% implied volatility. It's gold. It doesn't move like that. If this, if if all of this price projections are good, it's going to go from 35 to 37, back to 36, up to 38 in the next three months. It doesn't move very fast. Mm -hmm. And to my son Tanyan, he might be like, "Oh, let's go buy Bitcoin." To me, at 43 years old, I'm like. I love this slow, methodical type environment where I don't have to worry about it on a daily basis. And I can watch this little turtle just just creep its head up and and do nothing and never get its head cut off. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's so funny you say that because like when I wake up in the morning, I don't worry about my gold positions. I don't like, I got to go check my gold positions. Bitcoin, I'm like, all right, where's Bitcoin Bitcoin That's like the first thing. Yeah, Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin at 42,000 or is it 67? I got to know because it either could happen any random Thursday. There's nothing better than petting that shiny little rock in your portfolio. I can tell you that. Um, But you got to love it because you can miss out on a day or two and, and, and you don't have that fundamentally of a different read. You're looking at a day to day where you're talking about short term confirmation of the W formation in both gold and GDX. GDX is obviously confirming against the horizontal breakout channel. You've already reclaimed all your moving averages. These are obviously going to now play a role. You're not only stepping up the ladder, you just broke out of resistance. This looks really, really, really healthy for GDX in the short term. When you look at GLD or, or, or slash GC, you're going to see a W formation, pretty standard W formation, where you come down into support, double tick into support, consolidation at the resistance channel, you're breaking out of the neckline literally today, you're confirming out of the neckline. But when you talk about short term reversals, guys, it's not just the breakout that is ultimately confirmation. What is ultimately ultimately confirmation in a reversal is the first test of support. And that is the most important part of the reversal analysis is that first retest of if we establish that higher low. Why I was one of the reasons why I was so on GDX instead of gold over the last couple of weeks was because it's subtle, but it's important. This subtle increase in support, that subtle increase in support shows you that the buyers 
are willing to come in at a higher price threshold, whereas they have not been willing to in recent history. That shows you a little bit of positive mentality coming into GDX, coming into the miners that is front running, uh, front running the analysis in gold. And if you'll remember, one of the reasons why I was so confident that gold was going to retest and was going to stick the landing was because of what was happening in GDX. That increase in support was showing me the psychological, the psychological behavior of the traders in this space, and that showed, gave me a little bit of an indicator that you know, the buyers are willing to pay a little bit of a higher price. And when buyers are willing to pay a higher price, their confidence is building in this space. And so, and so it wasn't surprising to see gold stick that landing. And it's not surprising to see it perform the exact way it should perform in a reversal. But once again, the ultimate confirmation is not the breakout. The ultimate confirmation is not the breakout. We've been there. We've seen this. We haven't seen the level of quality in data and detail that we're seeing. We haven't seen the quality of a double bottom, double top reversal type thing. We've had V-shape analysis in terms of these breakouts. V-shape, you had a little bit of a W, but a V-shape, V-shape, and it didn't play out. Here you have more of a standardized W that is happening at a major, major, major area of support for gold. We all, in this environment, every one of us, including people on Wall Street, are like, gold should perform better in this environment. Gold should perform better in this environment. Gold should perform better in this environment. Well, we're now starting to see that wake up. And I just feel like we're at the beginning. And, and when I mean the beginning, I mean the very beginning of something here on gold. And because we feel we're at the very beginning of something and because it is gold, I don't feel we all have to be aggressive here. Ultimately, confirmation is not in the breakout of a reversal. It is in the snapback bullish retracement that we have yet to see here. And that is what is ultimately going to give you that it's time on gold. It's time to push the chips on gold. It's not the breakout. It's allowing gold to establish that higher high. The pearls are trading it here. Tackle's getting involved here, no doubt about that. But allow it to see how it navigates a higher high. And then, and then when we get that bullish retracement coming down into now upward moving, av upward moving averages, that's that picturesque, beautiful technical formation that we have been so patient on on gold. And I'm excited because there's five points to reverse reversal, Tim. Mm -hmm. Five points. We're past four. We just have the last one to confirm on gold. Yep. And by the way, I love all this analysis. I do have a question on GDX uh, as well in regards to what everything you guys have been talking about. Uh, one of our long-term members, and by the way, a recently married uh, member of ta uh, Team Tackle, Mickey Donnelly. Congratulations on your marriage. Mickey, buddy. congrats, brother. I saw that uh, on social media. Look very happy, my friend. Uh, Mickey asked, uh, you know, on GDX, you know, he's long. Uh, would you cover it at this point? I, I won it. I, I, I won it. I'd, I'd give it a little bit of room. But if you did cover it, Mickey, I would be very conservative in how you want to cover it. We're at the beginning points of a hypothetical bullish uptrend. I do think we want to open up that risk graph and take on the risk a little bit. Gold is also a, a, a GDX specifically, a gold a little bit, but GDX specifically is one of the better cash flow instruments out there in the market. It, there's not a lot of it, well, there are, there's quite a bit of cash flow instruments, but there's not a lot that you can consistently get that two to 3% ROI every mm -hmm. single month on the cover call. And GDX is certainly one of those. It, it, the cover call is, is truly the reason why so many in tackle trading uh, invest in GDX. It's got, it's obviously got the gold and the silver kickers and we like our miners. There's no doubt about that. Tackle likes their miners, no doubt about that. But there are times where I think you take the risk to the upside, and and there are times when I do think you want to, you know, release the crack and open up that risk graph. And when you're at the beginning of a potential reversal, 
I think it's at those moments in time where you do want to take a little bit of the risk to the downside, leave it a little bit more open-ended, ratio those covered calls a little bit in this environment. And what I mean by that is if you own a thousand shares, you're looking at writing Mark. five covered calls. You're not yeah. looking at writing 10 against a thousand. You're not looking to write two against 200. You're looking to write 50% against your, against your net position. And even in that, Mickey, you're not looking at doing a 40 Delta contract. You're looking looking at saying, okay, and it's because of the analysis why you do this, but it's, it, you, you come out here and you say, okay, let me go out to 43 days. And yes, you can work in weeklies in, in GDX. There's nothing wrong with that. Weeklies in GDX is fine. Once again, one of the reasons why we love it. But when you're looking at the, at, at 43 days out, you know, a tackle 25 covered call, aggressive covered call would be this 38 Delta contract for 96 bucks. That's what you would be looking at getting here. Now, when well, I said 90, 95 bucks, that's what you would be looking at getting. Well, if you're, if you wanted to do the covered call, and again, let's say you own a thousand shares. Well, you might be better off saying, let me take half the cash flow for 45 bucks. Let me sell the 38 contract because the amount of things that would have to happen for gold to get to 38 in the next 43 days, I just don't think it's going to happen. I just don't think it's going to happen. And so you get, you just got too much to fight up against here, Mickey. Like we could see it hitting resistance here and stabilizing, you know, you're obviously going to have a battle here at the 200 day moving average. So if you come here and you say, let me sell that 38 Delta contract, the 36 strike price, I can see a ton of scenarios where 36 is hit in the next 43 days where you're going to have a management decision. And quite frankly, Mickey, I don't think you want to get called out at 36 right underneath the 200-day moving average at 37. And so I, I, I don't think that's the case. And so when we're talking about the covered call, when to write the covered call, when to open up that risk graph and leave it open-ended, I think this is one of those environments where you want to take on the, uh, the risk to a certain extent. If you do look to cover, you look to cover a ratioed percentage of your net position, and you do so with a very conservative delta, making sure that you are up above any resistance channel so you don't get your goal taken away from you. And the reason I say that, Mickey, is because of the same conversation I had with my son and my daughter last night about holding periods. And one of the biggest mistakes that all of us traders make is we get called out on our covered calls and we and we love the position. We get covered, we get called out, we stop thinking about it, and all of a sudden it's it, it's up 10, 20, 30 percent. I remember the last time it wasn't the last time, but the story I was telling them was my first trade on Tesla. In my first trade on Tesla, I bought Tesla for $38 a share. I sold it for $40 a share. And my son, and I said, Tanya, how much money did I leave on the table if I just would have held till today? And guys, it's millions and millions and millions of dollars. And my son is like, oh my goodness, that's just crazy. What, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I said, what are you talking about? I sold the 40 call option. I gave somebody the opportunity to buy the stock for me at 40 and they did so. I didn't have a chance to buy it again until it was $130 a share because it broke out and went to $130 a mm -hmm. share. And so you don't want to have those stories simply because you were a little bit too aggressive in your covered calls. There are times to leave that open-ended. And what I didn't tell my son Tanyan on that Tesla story was Tesla was forming a high base breakout pattern in a good bullish uptrend. And I just wasn't familiar with all that stuff yet. I like gold here. I'm perfectly fine covering gold because it's gold and it doesn't move very aggressively, but I like it. I, I like a ratio here if you do it, and I like it above that 200-day moving average if it's done as well.